everybody. Uh, welcome to the Pre-Recorded Lecture. Uh, hope your midterm was great. If you're watching this before the midterm, you probably shouldn't. You should prepare for the midterm. Or if you want some entertainment, then maybe. Anyways, so today I'm going to continue studying permutations and <coughs> I'm going to discuss something much more familiar to many of you which is inversions. So by definition, an inversion, so if you give me a permutation, uh, remember Sn is the set of permutations of bracket n. So if you give me such a permutation, then I'm going to denote by inv, oops, inv of w the number of inversions. So it's the number of pairs, 1 less than i, uh, less than j less than or equal to n, such that w of i is bigger than w of j. So it's the number of pairs of indices which are out of order. So we, uh, in this case, uh, for i less than j, such that w i is bigger than w sub j, we say that we say that the pair w i w j is an inversion of w. So in other words, <coughs> for descents I was recording the positions. For inversions, I'm going to record the actual indices, the actual uh, elements of w. So yeah, maybe I should try an example. Maybe w is 5, 2, uh, 3, 1, 4. And then the inversions are inversions are 5, comma 2. So the, the two uh, uh, wn and wj don't have to be right next to each other, unlike for descents. 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, mm -hmm. 2, 1, and 3, 1. So the number of inversions of w is equal to 5. Yeah. And so maybe I should try, yeah, okay, let, let's try. So w is in one line, in two line notation. W is 5, 2, 3, 1, 4. Maybe I should compute the inverse. So remember, the inverse of W is just you treat W as a bijection and you take the inverse as a map. So uh, the inverse sends 1 to 4, and 2 to 2, and 3 to 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 to 4, 2 to 2, 3 to 3. 4 to 5 and 5 to 1. And if I compute the number of inversions of W inverse, uh, then let's see. I have 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 1. That's 3 inversions. And then there's also 2, 1 and 3, 1. So there is 5 inversions. And so that's the first kind of very simple lemma. That if you take the inverse, if you take the inverse, the number of inversions stays the same. Number of inversions of W is equal to the number of inversions of W inverse. And the proof, uh, well, the proof is basically an exercise, but uh, the main observation is that if Wi and Wj is an inversion of W if and only if uh, I comma J is an inversion of W inverse. So in the let's say I look at the above example, so five two is uh, for 5, 2, i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2. So in particular, I should have 2, 1 is an inversion of W inverse. Similarly, 5, 3 is i and j are 1 and 3. 
So 3, 1 is an inversion of W inverse. Let's try another one. Uh -huh. Yeah, 5, 4. Okay, 5, 4 is I and J are 1 and 5. So 5 and 1 form an inversion. 2, 1, uh, I and J are 2 and 4. So 4 and 2 form an inversion, etc. Uh, yeah, so that's the, I mean, that's very easy to just, just by definition, to deduce that if you take W inverse, you're still going to get, you just reverse the roles of W, I, W, J, and of I and J. So, uh, so that's the easy part. Well, what about, what about if I, maybe I also should, try to give you an example of can yeah let's let's try to let's set the goal so the goal is going to be to compute to compute the sum over all permutations in sn of q to the number of inversions of w for example say n is equal to 3, so there are 6 permutations. 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, and 3, 2, 1. And then each of them has a number of inversions. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so in this case, the sum would be, I just take Q to the Q to the number of inversions for each permutation. So we get 1 plus 2Q plus 2Q squared plus 2 plus Q cubed. So the goal is to find a formula which would give us this polynomial for each n. Yeah, and so how? Well, how do I do this? And I have to, it's convenient, it's going to be convenient for me, and it's also a standard object in combinatorics, is to introduce some Q analogs. So here is the definition. The Q analog of N is, so the notation is, there is a slight clash of notation for bracket N, but so bracket n sub q is not a set, it's a polynomial. It's a polynomial which is just 1 plus q plus q squared, etc., all the way up to q to the n minus 1. So the idea of a q analog is, is that this goes to n as q goes to 1. The q analog of a number is the polynomial like this. And yeah, so there's also the Q factorial. Q factorial of N is uh, denoted N sub Q factorial. So it's by definition the product of Q numbers, right? So these are Q analogs of numbers. And then for the factorial, I take one, the Q analog of one times the Q analog of two times uh, etc times the Q analog of n. So notice there is an well there is a nice observation which is that if you uh, if you take the sum if you take the sum and you send Q to one, then this this is gonna converge to n factorial, right? So, uh, well, because each term converges to one, there's n factorial terms. So uh, this is very suggestive because we also know that uh, the n factorial, the Q analog of the n factorial, converges to n factorial as Q goes to one. So this is not a coincidence, and the let me let me state the result, and I'm going to try to prove. Uh, 
Yeah, or maybe let's let's even try to do an example. Yeah, let's try an example. Example for n equals to three. If I just compute uh, the Q analog of three factorial, so it's it's the Q analog of one, which by definition is one. So this by definition is equal to one. So I get one times one plus Q times one plus Q plus Q squared, which is uh, equal to one plus two Q plus two Q squared plus Q cubed. And you can see that it's the same polynomial as I had over here, but computed in a different way. So yeah, that's the, that's the first claim of this class. Or even, okay, let's promote it to. Okay, let's promote it to the, to a theorem. Theorem is that the sum of w in S n, q to the number of inversions of w is equal to bracket n q factorial to the q l q q factorial of n. So, okay, N and the proof is actually not that hard. You, you can kind of try to pause and try to prove this yourself. It's, uh, it's a pretty simple idea, which we kind of already tried before. And what you do is you try to remove the, you can, can try to construct, uh, anyways, let me try to explain how the proof works. So, uh, So let's say I take a permutation. Let's say I take a permutation w, and uh, so it has some number of inversions, and I want to. I want to to define some numbers a i such that uh, I want to kind of split the inversions of w according to the position of the first uh, element of the pair. So uh, let a i be the number of it's the number of j's well okay according to the second number of j's to the to the left uh, of i in one line notation notation for w uh, number of j's to the left of i such that such that j is bigger than i. So I get the sequence a1, a2, etc. up to a n. So maybe, okay, let, let's see what happens for, for my permutation w here. So I need to, a i is the number of, uh, yeah, let, let, let me just write it down. So what is a five? A five A5 is the, I take five and I look at how many elements to the left of five are bigger than five. And the answer is zero. And a four is, so four is here. And there is a whole lot of elements to the left of four but only one of them is bigger. A4 is equal to one, and A3 is equal to, uh, three is here, five is bigger, so A3 is one, and A2 is one, and A1 is three. And you can also, since I have the list of inversion inversions, I can just look at the last, at the last element in each inversion which is, uh, wait, hold on. Mm. Okay, there is also five, there is one more inversion, which is five comma one, right? Uh, 
Okay, let's try to fix the previous example. What 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 was going on? Uh, okay, five two, five two, five three, five four, five one, and okay, there's there is also five, comma one. So the number of conversions is six. Uh, so then it's weird that I got five for the number of conversions. Let's count it again. Four two, four three. Four one. That's three inversions, uh, and then five one, three one, and two one. Okay, that's the number of inversions of double inverse is also six, and I guess I was cheating a little bit. All right. So uh, nevertheless, uh, this proposition is still true, and uh, so yeah, there's an extra five, comma one. And indeed, you see that a1 is equal to 3, because there is three pairs which where the second term is equal to 1, and etc. So, so I get the sequence. And what I'd like to claim is that the sequence determines w. And also, oh, OK. So yeah, there's, here's a few properties of the, of the sequence of a's. First of all, the, in the number of inversions of W is equal to A1 plus A2 plus etc. plus A sub N. Uh, that's just obvious because I split the all inversion pairs according to the second index. The second part is uh, also pretty clear. So for each I, for each I, uh, A I satisfies an inequality, has to be between zero and N minus I. So for example, A1 is, for example, A1, A1 is between 0 and 5 minus 1, which is 4. So, and th the reason is that, well, there could, there can only, there are only n minus i. If you fix i, then the number of indices which are bigger than i, there is n minus 1 of them. If they're all to the left, then it's exactly n minus i. Otherwise, it's going to be less. So that's also an easy property. And the hard property is that the, uh, the numbers w is uniquely determined by the sequence a1, a2, all the way up to an. So and that that requires some explanation. So let me try to let me try to recover W from the AIs. The there is an algorithm, and the algorithm I is actually to recover W. Well, what to do uh, W from from this A sequence? You start with an empty word. So start uh, with u. I'm going to denote it u to the bra u to the bracket n minus one n plus one empty empty sequence or empty word. And then uh, at each step you want to insert. So you go that kind of down from for i from n to n minus one, n minus one, all the way up to one. You want to insert insert i into u uh, i plus one. Well, okay. Let let me erase this. Uh, let you define u bracket i. Uh, let u be obtained by inserting i into u i plus 1 i plus 1 so that it has a i terms 
to the left. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to reconstruct W starting from the largest elements. So yeah, maybe I should uh, let's say I even try this example without. So let's say I forget what W is. So let's say I have this A sequence here. So I start with the empty. So n is equal to 5, right? And so u bracket 6 is going to be an empty, it's an empty word. And u bracket 5 is going to, I insert 5 into u6. And then u4 is, I insert 4 in here, such that uh, there, is one, there is one element to the left of 4. So it's going to be 5, 4. And then u3 is going to be, I'm going to insert a3 so that there is one element to the left of 3. 5, 3, 4. u2 is, I insert 2 so that there is one element to the left of 2. 5, 2, 3, 4. And finally u1 is, I insert 1. So that there are three elements to the left. Five, two, three, one, four. Is it the same as five, two, three, one, four? Okay, it's the same permutation. So yeah, that's uh, and it's. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave it an ex as an exercise. Exercise, check that this algorithm describes a bijection between what? Between Sn and uh, the set of sequences a1 up to an satisfying um, satisfying that ai is between 0 and n minus i so and modulo this exercise now it's uh, because we already know that the number of inversions is just the sum of ai's uh, now you can, using this bijection, you basically, uh, so let's see, the sum over W in, uh, in Sn of Q to the number of inversions is equal to the sum over all such sequences, A1 A up to An, 0, Ai less than N minus I, of uh, Q to the sum of Ai's. Right, and uh, and now this sum separates into n different sums, and each individual sum into a product of n different sums. And each individual sum is going to give you the Q analog. It's going to basically give you this Q analog of n, of not of n but of all all numbers between one and n. So what you get is the Q, uh, the Q factorial of n. So, so that's the sort of I guess that's uh, the next statement is going to be much more tricky. But this statement was, I mean, it, this algorithm is pretty easy. You just kind of insert, you, you know exactly where to insert each number. So let me try to do a more complicated version, which uh, the statement itself, I think, is really, really beautiful. Uh, it's going to be about the major index. So uh, remember, we are dealing with descents. So recall that the, uh, for W in Sn, the set of descents is, as, a, as opposed to the number of descents, is just records all positions where 
w is wi is bigger than wi plus one. So uh, what I'm gonna do for the major index is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna just sum these numbers together. So uh, it's it's a very kind of unnatural notion. Uh, the major index of W is by definition maj of W is the sum over all descents, over all positions where the descent occurs, just the sum of these positions. So maybe I should try an example again. Let's say I take n equals to, yeah, maybe, first of all, let's try a big permutation. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So maybe w is this permutation here. Then I should mark the descents. Uh, nine is bigger than two. Eight bigger than five, and six bigger than four. So the major index of W is I'm gonna just sum the positions of where the descents occur. It's four plus six plus eight. Uh, yeah, which is eighteen. And maybe I should also try an example for n equals to three. So somewhere I have a table. Okay, I have a table here. So let me add another column, which is, oops, another column which is gonna, oops, it's gonna count the major index of W. So let's see. The descents are 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, and 3, 2, and 2, 1. And so the, the, the descents in the second position contribute 2 to the major index. The descents in the first position contribute 1 to the major index. So uh, the values are going to be 0, 1, 1, uh, whoops, sorry, 0, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3. So what happens is that, is that uh, you get the same set of numbers, but, uh, but in, differ in different order which again is not a coincidence. So let me, let me try to state, oh yeah, by the way, yeah, so let me try to state the result. It is a theorem. Um, if I take the same sum over W in ascent, but in instead of taking inversions, I take Q to the in major index of W, then I'm just going to get the same answer, a Q factorial of n. So, yeah, which which is also equal. Maybe I should add this in parentheses, which is also equal to the sum over W in the sand, Q to the inv of W. So, um, so in other words. In other words, there exists a bijection from a sand to a sand, maybe phi from a sand to a sand, satisfying uh, that such that it which sends a uh, which kind of takes the number of inversions to the major index. Right. Uh, so such a bijection would prove 
that this sum is equal to this sum here. But it's uh, yeah, you can pause the video and try to come up with one. It's it's pretty. I mean, it's, it's been open for a while. So um, yeah, well the history here is history of this theorem uh, is that the first first it was kind of the first person to consider the major index was uh, Percy McMahon first proof and he was a major he was a major in the British Army major Percy oops Percy McMahon and it was more than 100 years ago but uh, so and he did it using some algebraic manipulations he did not give a bijective proof and the problem of constructing a bijective proof was open for quite a while first bijective proof and it was given by uh, Foata, Dominique Foata, Foata in 1968 so yeah uh, it's more than 50 years between the proof and the bijective proof and what I'm gonna give our proof is gonna is due to Carlitz, Leonard Carlitz, in which was constructed some number of years after Foata. So yeah, it's it, uh, what I'm saying is it's what I'm about to do is pretty modern uh, by our standards. So it's not Euler, it's not you know 1748, or it's it's pretty recent. You know, uh, yeah, I, I don't think. Yeah, anyways, let me try to. Let me try to explain the proof. And again, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to... It's going to be similar to this proof, but slightly more complicated. So, uh, but I'm going to use what I, what I did above. So, recall... Recall that uh, permutations Sn is in bijection with sequences a1 up to an satisfying a zero between ai and n minus i so um, what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to try to i'm going to uh, instead of so so above I, my algorithm my algorithm over here constructed if you give me a sequence satisfying these conditions then it gives you a permutation whose number of inversions is the sum of these numbers but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give another algorithm which constructs a permutation whose major index is the sum of these numbers so the goal is to find permutation W such that uh, the major index of W is the sum A1 plus etc plus An because then if obviously if you can do that and if it's a bijection then it proves the result so but but finding such a permutation is not is non-trivial um, so again, I'm going to construct it sort of starting from the starting from the largest element. And for that, I need to I need to define uh, the major index more generally for not just permutations, but for actual for arbitrary sequences of integers. So uh, given given a and it's going to be defined in exactly in exactly the same way sequence u of integers so maybe u is u1 u2 all the way up to uk then uh, what I'm just some arbitrary integers what I'm going to define is the major index and the major index of u is the same is the sort of the same definition as before sum for i from 1 up to k of 
well it's the sum over i in bracket k over bracket k minus one sorry k minus one such that uh, ui is strictly bigger than ui plus one and then i just sum these indices so it's exactly the same as for the for four permutations and okay so now i want to construct I want to define the algorithm. I want to describe the algorithm. And it starts as before. So let u n plus 1 be the empty, empty sequence. So the major index, uh, the major index of the empty sequence is by definition is equal to 0. OK. And now I want to, for each i, n, n minus 1, all the way up to 1, all the way down to 1, I want to insert, so I want to let u bracket i be obtained from u i plus 1 by inserting i into u i plus one so that so that uh, the major index differ the major indices uh, the major index of u bracket i is so they differ by exactly a i So that's the basically that's the procedure, and uh, well, of course you, you could you could argue that okay why I why is there a place why does the place exist where you can insert i so that so that the difference of major indices is correct why uh, is it unique and why does it exist so and that's a sort of an exercise to do this rigorously but I'm going to give you an example so it's going to hopefully it's going to be clear exercise such an insertion place it exists exists and is unique provided that ai is between 0 and n minus i. So you want to insert i, which is smaller than all the other in indices in the word, uh, and you want the major indices to drop by a predictable value. So maybe, maybe I should try, so let's say I try some sequence. Maybe I try the same sequence as before. So uh, u bracket 6 is the empty word, and the major index is equal to 0. Now u bracket 5, I want to insert 5. Well, there is, there is a unique way uh, to insert the 5, and then the major index is equal to 0 as well. A5 is always 0. A, a sub n has to be between, n, between 0 and 0. So a sub n is always 0. But now, now it gets interesting. So u bracket four is either I have to insert four in one of in one of the two possible ways. It's four five or five four. And there is a descent at five four. So here the major index is one, and here the major index is zero. So and because I know that a sub four is equal to one. I must choose five, five, four. So maybe I should put it over here and just write five, four. Major index 
is one now. Okay, uh, for you bracket three it's going to be either uh, five, four, three, or five, three, four, or five, well, or three, five, four. And let's see. Here I have two descents, here I have one descent, and here I also have one descent. But they are at different places. So the major index is equal to 1 plus 2, that's 3. Here it's equal to 1, and here it's equal to 2. And what is, let's see, a sub 3 is equal to 1. So I have to choose 5, 3, 4. Five, three, four. Oops. Five, three, four. And now the major index is equal to two. And now you two. I have to insert two. There is four possibilities. Five, three, four, two, or five, three, two, four. Five, two, three, four. Or five, or two, five, three, four. Okay, let's see. 5, 3, 4, 2. 5, 3, 2, 4. 5, 2, 3, 4. And 2, 5, 3, 4. So the major index is equal to 1 plus 3, that's 4. Here it's 1 plus 2, that's 3. Here is just 1. And here it's 2. So you see, I'm always getting all. Wait, where is it? Uh, hold on, I'm not doing it right. Yeah, I'm not doing it right, sorry. Uh, all right, let's erase. Let's erase this, because here I have to, AI is, A3 is the difference between the major indices. So the major indices have to differ by one, but here, I chose uh, basically this corresponds to a3 being 0. Yeah, let me actually, uh, for the sake of time, let me just erase a3 and replace it by 0. But you can see that I could have chosen 0 or 1 or 2. So all possible values are present exactly once. So, yeah, but. Five, three, two. The major index is equal to one, and so in particular, uh, I want the major index to a two is equal to one. So I want the major index to increase by one. So it has to be equal to two. So I have to choose two, five, three, four as my next sequence. Two, five, three, four. And finally, u. Mm, finally, u one is. I have to insert one in. Okay, let's let's write down all possibilities. Two. So here the major index is equal to two. Two five three four one. Two five three one four. Two five one three four. Two one five three four. One two. Five, three, four, and the the descents are five, three, four, one, five, three, one, and five, one, two, one, five, three, five, three. So the major index is equal to. Let's see. Here it's two plus four, so it's six. Wait, six? Okay. Uh, here it's 2 plus 3, 5. Here it is just 2. Here it is uh, 1 plus 3, that's 4. And finally here it is just 3. So I have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, so the difference between the major indices is going to be 0 between just all numbers exactly once again. In particular, a1 is equal to 3. So the new major index has to be 5.
25314 is my permutation. Two five three one four. Two five three one four. That's the answer. And the major index is equal to five three three one. The major index is equal to two plus three. Two plus three, that's five. And that also happens to be the sum of these numbers. Um, zero. Right? Zero plus one plus zero plus one plus three. That's also five. So yeah, and the the reason. So why does it exist in general? So let me try some some gi gigantic word. Um, six four nine five seven eight three, maybe something like this. So I have my descents. Nine five seven eight three. And now if I and and then I have uh, so here let me how many indices I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven indices. Seven is the length of my word. So if I look at the possible insertions, there is eight possible positions for inter insertion. Uh, let's see if I and I'm, I'm going to insert two into this word. So, uh, and I want to see how, what happens to the major index. Well, if I put it at the end, right, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a new descent. So if I put a two here, then it's going to be a descent and it's going to contribute seven. I'm going to get an extra seven contribution to the major index. So here it gives you plus seven to the major index. Now, uh, if I put it here, then uh, so if this is a two, right, this is a two, then there is going to be a descent between eight and two, but there is going to be no no descent between two and three. So in a sense, I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna change anything at all. So zero. Plus plus zero is if I use this position here, and then what's going to happen is that. So let, let's look at all positions where descents happen. So let's say I want to insert here, between nine and five. If there is a two here, then there is going to be a descent between nine and two. But all other all descents to the right of it are going to just shift by one, to shift one position to the right. So. Uh, yeah, maybe I should maybe I should even start with a. Uh, maybe I should put a ten here. No, let's not put it. There. Okay, never mind. So, anyways, what I'm saying is that if I is if I insert it to here, I'm gonna increase the major index by one. Because. Uh, and here I'm I'm gonna it's gonna be plus two and etc. So whenever you insert, whenever you insert a. Allow the, the two in the middle of a descent, then you don't change anything to the left, but everything to the right, the descents are all going to shift by one position to the right. And in particular, the total major index is going to increase by, by the number of red dots to the right of, of my red dot. Um. So let me, let me write it down. In certain in the middle of of a descent increases the major index by the number of descents to the right of it to the right of of our chosen descent and and similarly, if you if you insert a two here, right? If you, if you insert a two into any of the remaining positions, then you don't create well. You create a new descent, right? So let's say a two is here. You create a, a completely new descent, 
and you also shift all the sense to the right by one one step to the right so let's see what happens here if I insert a 2 here then I'm gonna have a descent which contributes an extra 5 but then I also shift this descent one step to the right so uh, I get an extra an extra 6 for this position if I use this posi position then I'm gonna create a new descent and I'm gonna I'm gonna shift this descent by one so and this new descent is in position 4 so I get extra 5 and here I'm gonna get extra 4 and here I'm gonna get extra 3 just because here I shift if I put it to at the beginning then I shift all descents one step to the right and I don't create any new descents so So in general, these numbers which uh, correspond to non-descents are going to increase from, from the number of descents up to n, and, and all numbers which correspond to descents, I'm going to increase right to left from 0 to the number of descents minus 1. And that's why, that's why the proof works. So yeah, I don't know how much uh, this explanation is helpful, but it was, this was an exercise anyway, so you should be able to complete it yourself. And yeah, that's it. So I will see you all next Wednesday. And have a good weekend and a good midterm.